We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. For the final stop in our two-week tour of India, we're exploring the city of dreams, Mumbai, or Bombay. Anyway, we're wrapping our trip up here because its unique combination of art, history, food, theater, and nightlife is said to be the metropolitan equivalent of the ultimate masala spice mix. It has a little bit of everything. Let's get to it. I hope Mumbai is ready for us because this is the last stop on our tour of India. So we are gonna soak up as much as we can in our two days of tours that we're gonna be here. And we're starting at the spice market. It's hard to describe smells, but we will do our best. It's in the air and it's all mixed together as if it's one spice. And I love it. I really, really love it. It's very strong though. So these shops here are locally owned, family owned. They have their own brands. But they get the spices from all over the country. Uh, from different farmers and harvesters. That's what that's called. Smell that. It's a very strong pungent smell. What is that? No, no, that smells like, um, it's like a... Onion and garlic? Yes! Onion and garlic. It smells like an onion and garlic nut. Oh, okay. Tastes like black licorice or whatever. Yeah. That's fennel seed? Yeah. Fennel. Well, that was fennel seed, so that makes sense. Take a bite. Jaggery is where they take sugar cane juice and they just boil it down to this. Mmm. It's sweet, like you. What do you think? Sometimes. You scare me. <laughs> it's like straight brown sugar. Literally straight brown sugar. As we've already seen in other places that we've been in India in some of our past episodes, you can buy pre-made packets of different spice mixes just like these. But the reason for going to a spice shop like this one is when you want to create your own combination of spices. So you can put together any combination custom for your needs. And your curry is going to taste different than your neighbor's curry. Everybody's spices and their mixtures are going to be different than everybody else's. It's all going to be very unique. Now this is really interesting to me because these are candy coated fennel seeds. That's all it is. And fennel seeds taste like black licorice. The candy coating just adds the sugar element. These are basically teeny tiny good and plenties, which is a candy we have in the States. Goes back to my childhood and well, well, well beyond that. So uh, I think my mom would love these. Very good. It doesn't taste like good and plenties though. I don't know. There's something else in there besides a fennel and the candy. I gotta find out what it is. So this version has a little bit of dried coconut in it, but that's it. So it really is just fennel and that's fascinating because I feel like I taste additional spices in there and I'm completely wrong. And that's amazing because Phil has never been wrong before, so this is the first. That checks out actually. KP is our guide by the way. He's telling us everything about these spices because we of course know nothing about them. But he just mentioned something kind of cool which is that the bigger peppers right here, like this one, are really only gonna be used to add color to your food. So this would add that nice deep red. Whereas the smaller ones are gonna have the heat. That's where you're gonna get the spicy effect. KP tells us that in India, instead of going to the doctor, you go to the kitchen first. So a lot of these ingredients aren't just for food, they're for healing. Like this campo, if you smell it, smells just like a, like a Vicks VapoRub or a Bengay or something like that. He also says, Turmeric is a cure-all for everything. If you have a cut, you put turmeric on it and it's an antibacterial. And she says that if he ever got shot, his mom wouldn't panic because she has turmeric. <laughs> this is pan, and we tried some of this in Delhi. I had a huge one if you saw that episode. If you haven't seen that episode, click up here. Uh, but I actually wasn't a fan of it. Uh, I'm willing to try it again at some point, but maybe not today. Kudos to my friend Sachin for turning this on to that when we were in Delhi, but I'm with Aaron on this. I don't need another pond for a little while. The entire street is just spice store after spice store after spice store, and to a large degree, they're selling the same stuff. So in terms of knowing which one you go to, KP tells us that it's mostly a family affair. You go to the one that your mom went to. So the generations just kind of keep that going and it would be a pretty big deal to switch stores if you wanted to do that at any point. So that's how it works. In our episode where we were staying on the Pauline houseboats in Philippines, we had a big pot full of uh, fresh water that was for our drinking water on our houseboat. And I just understood now based on what KP was telling us why they store it that way and it's because the earthenware pots like these 
keep the water cool naturally. So that's what these are. It's not just spices in the spice market, goods, handmade goods like this also. This is a little milling operation where people will bring their grains, whether it's rice or wheat or whatever, knowing that they have the quality that they want, and they'll bring it and just throw this guy a few bucks to mill it for them. So then they have the rice flour or the wheat flour that they can use for ingredients. And then there's no question over the quality of the flour that they're using. We're right outside a Hindu temple. So outside of the temple, you might see a lady with some grass and her cow. So she prepares food for the cow and the grass, and you pay her to feed her cow. This is a brilliant business plan, I love it. But you do it for good karma. So we're gonna let Colt have some good karma. Thank you. Open it up. But wait, there's more. She doesn't only sell grass and food for the cow, she also sells cow dung and cow urine. We don't know yet, we're gonna find out. The cow dung is used as fuel, and then the urine has medicinal properties. So uh, I guess KP says if you have an earache, an earache, I might stick with the earache. I, you know what I love about it? I'm smiling because this is a, a new idea for me, but I'm smiling also because it's so organic and holy to use every part of an animal. Like we are all just a circle of life and I do love that about it. But it is a very new idea. <laughs> We're about to go into another area of the market where it is a lot more crowded, the aromas are gonna be much more intense, and it's gonna be very loud. So we're probably not gonna be able to talk too much through there. Just wanna give a heads up as we walk into that area. There are three stages to the spices. First you dry it, then you roast it, and then third, you pound it out to make a powder. This is where you would go to have your custom spice mix made. And first you pick out your whole spices and you put in here how much you want and the prices. And it ends up looking something like this. This is about a hundred dollar recipe. So after you pick out your whole spices, you'll take them over there for the processing. Remember the three steps, they dry it, they roast it, and then they powder it, make it into powder. This is the roasting process. And if I thought that it smelled good when they were powder form, I was wrong. This smells insane. Coconut garlic. Chutney. Chutney. Coconut garlic chutney. It's like exactly what it is, coconut garlic. It almost tastes like butter. Like it has like this buttery melted taste to it. What that roasting process does is it just brings out the aromas from all of the spices. So it's that much more intense. that whole recipe for that. Now we're gonna see what the spices can do in action. So, do you guys remember what masala tea is made of? Yes. What is it? Condensed milk pasteurized. Pasteurized milk. Uh-huh. Tea leaves. Yes. Something sugar. Uh-huh, sugar. And more sugar, sugar, sugar. That's right. Sugar, 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 sugar. Ah, uh, thank you. I'm trying mine with milk. Oh, that's so good, wow. It is so sweet. That's the sweetest masala tea that we have had. Brooklyn, you've got to try a little bite because you like milk. Try a little tiny sip. It's very hot. No, it actually just tastes like sugar tea. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it is. It's tea. Sugar, 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 sugar. If you think this is kind of hectic, wait till you see where we're going next. This is the thieves market. And there probably aren't too many thieves here. It actually originates from a misnomer. The name of the market was the Shore Market, and Shore means noisy, but it's very similar to the word for thieves, which is chore, so people would confuse it. But, as KP tells us, it's lived up to its name because now there's a lot of black market, gray market goods here, so it really fits into that thieves theme. We're gonna take a quick break from the chaos and the heat and get a little ice cream. This is hand-churned ice cream, and if you don't know how ice cream is made, let me show you because I make a lot of ice cream. So we have our chamber here with a little uh, ingredients component. This is where you would put the milk or the cream, the eggs. Once you make your ice cream mixture, it goes in here. We're gonna put our lid on and it's gonna go into this bucket or barrel and that's gonna be full of ice that is salted on the outside. So we'll lock this into place and then we have our little 
handle to churn and then the ice goes all around the outside and by putting the salt on the ice it makes the ice colder which helps you freeze the ice cream faster. So then we just turn, turn, turn and the ice cream makers we have at home have a paddle inside so it keeps aerating it to make it fluffier and creamier as you freeze it. And that is traditional handmade Indian ice cream. I got strawberry ice cream and it tastes like strawberry ice cream. I have a fluffy apple ice cream. Custard apple, right? Yeah. And honestly, it's not even the consistency of ice cream. It's like ice crushed so much. And Phil ordered us some Chiku to share. Chico sounds fascinating to me. We haven't had any yet, but it is a cross between an apple and a fig. So if we come across any ripe ones, I want to try it. So far we've had not ripe ones on our path. Let me try and like, I'm trying to dissect that flavor. I do get like a little apple and like something gives me cinnamon in it too. Let me try another bite. Yeah, I get it. It's like an apple and a fig, but there's so much milk flavor in this ice cream. Like that's the main taste that I get is milk and cinnamon and it's like very subtle apple-y, like almost like an apple sauce taste. Where I grew up we had something called ice milk, which I think is more similar to this because it's with milk. No cream, no half and half, no eggs, not so much a custard like ice cream is in the US. Just fruit, milk, and sugar. It hits the spot on this hot, hot day. And this is the oldest surviving hand-churned ice cream shop in Mumbai. It opened in 1887. Today the business is run by the sixth generation of the family. Wow. That's probably why it's still the only active ice cream shop from back then is because of the relationships that the family has had with the customers that come in here and the tourists. Now let's go see what the action's all about. Interesting fact that KP just told us, ice in Mumbai was not from refrigeration until about 1950, and prior to that, they would ship it over on boats from Boston in the US. A lot of antiques here, and a lot of the items have been stolen from houses, palaces, large estates, and some ships, like these doors. Doors were taken from homes. It's a lot like a big pawn shop but not everything here is stolen. This is like the motor alley right here. It's a bunch of old scooters, motorcycles, and cars, and they're all being disassembled. They can break a car down here into parts in about one hour flat. Every part is used. The metal goes to one shop, the seat cushions go to another, the steering wheel, the, the what's left in the oil can, like every small part of the car is used at a different shop. It all goes to different areas. Now we're moving out of the uh, automotive junkyard section and moving into the antiques area. The population in Mumbai is 22 million people, but they say that it's 22 million stories because so many people come from so many different walks of life and everyone has a story. Well, these antiques all have a story. Nobody knows exactly how old they are and nobody really knows the stories behind them. They're just sort of collected. The history of them is kind of lost, unfortunately, but they're beautiful. <sighs> This is AC, but it's also a bunch of Bollywood posters. Back in the day before printers, they used to hand paint these posters. So these are prints of those, but even in different cities, they'd be different artists that would hand print the posters. Hand paint the posters. Leaving the AC, going back into the heat, and then we're calling it a day today because we have to rest and get really hungry for tomorrow because tomorrow it's our favorite time, it's food time. We're gonna explore the street foods of Mumbai. I'm starving! So it's a good thing that we're doing a food tour and it's starting right now with Chiku. So this is the fruit that we passed on the street yesterday and KP said it's delicious, it's like a apple fig. We had the flavoring in our ice cream. Oh, apple date, not fig. The ones we passed on the street weren't ripe enough, but today they're ripe, so we're gonna try it out for ourselves. Really reminds me of a date. It's really sweet and like almost like a prune flavor. And then there's a pit inside. And there are multiple pits, so there might be three or four of those inside, so make sure you don't bite into that. Oh my gosh, you know what it reminds me of? Like a brandy. It's like a, a thick prune kind of 
flavor, like a sweet, sweet dessert brandy or something. I mean, you could really say it's just like an overly sweet apple. That's where the date side comes from. But it does taste like an apple, but with a whole lot higher sugar content. What do you think, Colt? It's too sweet. A little too sweet for him. It tastes like an apple mixed with a coconut. So I don't think it went over too well with the kids. I like it, but maybe we'll have better luck with the, the next spot. This video is sponsored by Brooklyn Lockwood, the magic show. Can I have your hand? Here's the magic trick. Thank you. Irani chai with spices on top because this is an Irani cafe and it's called Kiani and Co. So what we do, like Colt said, is you take the bread, dip it, and take a bite. This bread is drenched in butter on the inside. So when you dip it in the hot chai, it's gonna melt. I get like an apple spice, not so much pumpkin, but Colt's ripe. It has like a really sweet, but then because of the butter, just like melty and creamy taste to it. It's delicious. I want to try some of the chai on its own. Oh, that's so good. I feel like you get apple. Cotti is basically a croissant, but bite size. Uh, it also just falls apart in your mouth as soon as you eat it. It's so, it's so delicious and flaky. And you can dip these too. That does not soak up the chai as much as the bread does, obviously, so it's a little bit more subtle than the bread dip. Last but not least, we have a mava cake, which is made with ricotta, but it's not a cheesecake. It's more of a traditional spongy cake consistency. It's so funny. This is like some pumpkin spice kind of bread or cake or something. And apparently Brooklyn loves this, so you know it's got to be good. Extremely moist. I mean, you can see like when I cut through it how moist that is. It's really like a bread. I would, I wouldn't say moist. I'd say more like a cornbread texture to it. It's a bit grainy, I think, but really good because it's really sweet. It's like a sweet grainy bread. I get a Percy ice cream soda. You can only get this kind of soda here or at a Percy cafe. Somehow it tastes like lychee ice cream. Lychee ice cream, ah. I got a raspberry soda. That tastes amazing. This is probably the best soda that I've ever had. Now we're gonna try some really traditional Indian food. This place is an institution. It is the oldest operable restaurant in the entire city of Mumbai. In fact, it is now on the seventh generation from the man who started it. He came down from Agra in 1848 and started it just with a little cart where he would sell food. And today it's a full restaurant. The owner that we were just speaking to right over here is fifth generation, so there are two beyond him that are involved in the restaurant. Their specialty is puri, and it comes in five different flavors. So this is beetroot, spinach, lentils, lentil masala, ricotta cheese, and then this is a plain, original. And the sauces are two different sauces. So this one is a potato, and that is pumpkin. I'm gonna try it before Brooklyn does because they're supposed to be spicy, and I'm really looking forward to spicy. I don't know if Brooklyn is so much is. Beetroot, I'm gonna dip it in here. Mmm, that's good. The pumpkin sauce is much thicker and not sweet. It's like an earthy pumpkin taste. Really good, which I like a lot. And it is spicy, but not too spicy for me. And now I'm gonna try the spinach and do it with the pumpkin first. I really love the pumpkin sauce. The spinach one is really good. I feel like I got more spinach flavor in that one than beet flavor in the beet one. I'm gonna go for the ricotta because it would match what we just had in that cake bread, and it's not actually ricotta, it's uh, more like a farmer's cheese. It's called cottage cheese. The inside looks just like the pumpkin sauce, or actually it looks like a mix between the sauce, and you do get some flavor like that already. All right, I'm gonna do pumpkin. There's quite a bit of spice in that pumpkin sauce, and in the potato sauce. It's not like a tortilla because it's so much thicker. It's really soft, and just pulls apart like a chalupa. Very flaky little shell, fun to eat. 
KP says that if it's not hot enough for us, try it with the chili inside. It's a pickled chili. So as a matter of fact, it's not vinegar in the chilies. These are naturally fermented for four days with lemon juice and rock salt. So that's just a natural flavor from those ingredients. I have the added benefit of knowing exactly what's in it beforehand. But with that knowledge, I would say, yeah, it doesn't really taste like vinegar anymore. I don't think it tastes like lemon juice either or rock salt, but I guess that's a flavor you get when you mix those things together for four days. There are two sauces, potato and pumpkin, are the original sauces because those are the two ingredients that were available year round. Now, pumpkin is my favorite, and that's a good thing because pumpkin is known to be good for your bloodstream. Healthy, healthy. So a little special sweet treat for the kids from the owner because he heard they have a sweet tooth. It's our gulab jamun, and it is similar to the ricotta cake that we had over there, except it's ricotta mixed with wheat flour into little balls. They're like little cheesy donuts almost, and they're deep fried and then put in this cardamom and saffron and sugar sauce. Here you go, honey. That is drenched in sugar. <laughs> like a donut on sugar crack. It's like a, a waffle with a lot of sugar. Oh, she loves it. Thank you. We're in trouble. This is going to be a big sugar rush. <laughs> Time to go now. She's right. It's getting dark out. Getting a little floral bracelet. It smells really good. It's better than perfume, I'd say. Perfect, beautiful. We're walking to our next restaurant on this busy, busy street. And that beautiful building over there is the train station, which is known as the second most beautiful train station in the world, next only to the uh, train station at King's Crossing in London. This is Vatapad, and since it's right across the street from the train station, and this is kind of a rush hour, it's pretty crowded. A lot of people want to get from the train and get straight here, or they go straight from here to the train. It kind of looks like a Chick-fil-A sandwich, but it's definitely not. It is mashed potato covered in chickpea flour, deep fried, and then a coriander chili sauce. And a date and tamarind sauce, too. So you have the sweet and the spicy. Look at that open up. All right, and then take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. I love it. It is so delicious. That hot mashed potatoes inside just kind of like opens up. And it's such a good texture. And the bread is a little bit sweet. And it's like perfect how it all comes together. But there's something like herbal herb spices in there. It might be the grand masala that I'm tasting. There are a lot of spices and herbs in there and it's a secret recipe. Nobody knows. But man, this is so good. Now Vada Pav was the most popular street food in all of Mumbai and now we're in one of the most popular places to hang out after dark. The beach. We wanted to experience our food the way the locals do it, so we are sitting crisscross applesauce in a circle on these rugs here. And the reason why in India they want to sit and eat their food is because your legs go in front of you and it kind of contracts your stomach so you don't overeat. Which is kind of a, an issue for us on food tours, so it'll be good practice. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Yes. Full of butter. What we have here is an amazing concoction called Pau Bhaji. And I had just watched them make the entire thing up here from scratch. You have this bread that's got just a little bit of seasoning on it, but the sauce is what's really incredible. For this sauce, it is fresh tomatoes, there's onion, there's green bell pepper, there's spices, and it is all smashed together on the cooktop. A little bit of water in there just to make it saucy, but most of that evaporates as they're smashing it away. And then there's butter in it, and butter is kind of the secret ingredient. So now, what we're gonna do is just take a piece of the bread, scoop some of this on there. If you want, you can put a little onion on top there. Squeeze a little lime if you want to, but I'm good. Temperature hot, but not spicy. It's like a combination of curry flavors with sloppy joes with tomato sauce from pasta all in one but what's very unique about this compared to a lot of other sauces that are cooked down for an extended period of time is you really get every single dimension from each one of those ingredients you can taste some fresh tomato you taste the onion you taste the bell pepper it hasn't 
homogenize into a single smooth flavor yet. Phil didn't mention there's also mashed potato in it. It's got everything. That is delicious, and the bread, it's almost like paper on the outside. Like, it really holds all those flavors together, and you really gotta bite through to get a piece of it. It's so good, it's delicious. And this is exciting because this is KP's favorite street food. It's called a bum, a mum, it's called a Mumbai sandwich. It's called a Bombay sandwich. So it's mostly like grilled vegetables, the bread is grilled, cheese on top, it's kind of like a panini, I'd say. Now this is refreshing. This tastes like a salad in a sandwich, in a grilled sandwich. It's really good. KP has not steered us wrong. He has been a phenomenal guide. So if you wanna get in touch with him, if you're coming to India, we're gonna put his contact information in the description below so you can find him. Well, it's getting a little hard to sit down here like this on the floor, so uh, I think that means we're basically done with this round. Let's go burn off a few calories on the sand. Okay. All right, now that the children are done playing, we have one last stop. So we're gonna go out with a bang and we're doing something pretty special. So we're gonna have some dosa, which we had before in Delhi, but this is different. It's a drive-in. Now we're out of the car because we wanna see the operation, we wanna see how they work, we wanna check out the kitchen, but all these cars here on the street, they're all here for this little stand and so they're all eating their food in their car right now it really is like an old school drive-in they're in their cars and people here are going to go serve them through the window bring them the food bring them their drinks straight out of the kitchen now we have to figure out where we're going to eat it since we have to worry about lighting so we can show you yes. i can smell the cheese so we got a cheese dosa or cheese sada right Sada means plain. So if you didn't see our other episode with the dosa, you tear a piece off, and this is like paper thin, it's almost like a crepe, but uh, not sweet like a crepe, it's more like a cracker. This is a coconut chutney. You dip, scoop, ooh yeah, oh I love the chutney. And you eat, mmm. I love it with the cheese. The cheese is the best one. I'm trying to describe it, it's almost like a, a quesadilla, but but a grape and a cracker. It's so good. Mm. The dosa batter is made two parts lentil, one part rice, and then it is fermented for a couple of days? One day. One day. It's fermented for one day. And that's what makes it so unique and different. And then of course it's cooked so thinly. Makes it crispy. Tastes like a grilled cheese sandwich. For real. We are gonna round this out with a little palate cleanser. It's called Pani Puri. And it's cool. I can already tell that it's cold, especially compared to the dosa, which was very, very, very hot. It is spiced water, and here comes. Mm. Oh, that's refreshing. That's really refreshing. I was expecting it to have like a ton of flavors, and it does, but it's still like water. The cracker around it, it didn't get soggy at all. It's really crunchy, but it's so uh, weight. It's so thin and crunchy. It just kind of like easily chomps in your mouth and all you're left with is like a ton of water. Perfect palate cleanser for the night. So the spiced water is made of cumin, black salt, coriander, and chili. We've got to get these kids to bed. This was a phenomenal food tour. KP, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Best guide ever. But let's get these kids to bed. They are so tired. Mumbai has been a great way to end our two week tour of this beautiful country and the largest democracy in the world. It's great mix of old world architecture and modern high rises help it live up to its title as the commercial capital of India. At the beginning of the episode, I alluded to the dual names of the city. While variations of the name Mumbai were used hundreds of years ago, when British took control in the 17th century, they changed it to Bombay, which is an anglicized version of the name Bombayam. That means good bay. But in 1995, the name was changed to Mumbai, paying tribute to the goddess Mumbadevi, or goddess mother. This entire trip was arranged for us by the bespoke planning team at Inspirata. This is yet another incredible benefit that's included with our past membership. They booked all of our in-country flights, the boats, the trains, transfers, guides, excursions, and the hotels, so that all we had to do was show up and soak up the culture. If you want to learn more about Inspirato and how it allows us to travel in luxury for an affordable monthly fee, 
head over to followabc.com slash pass. Now we're heading home to edit and post all these incredible episodes, but we already have more trips on the calendar, including Japan, Indonesia, South Africa, and a ton in between. Hit that subscribe button so you can follow along. We're the Lockwoods, Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people. You used to have medicinal properties. Medicine. Medicinal. Medicinal. If you have a yorick, you will have some people drink it, you hold that. I'll be a scientist. I would love to hold this. Thank you. Right. Take your point it's there. not right. warm, so. I swear it's going to be warm. Here you go. It will. Hello, Mia. That's all. Okay, thank you. Bye. Tastes like lychee ice cream. Lychee ice cream? Ah. What's wrong, bud? A rat just climbed up through the into the wall, climbed up the wall in that hole right there. What are you saying? Oh, me 